let's start off. I'll, I'll set up my feelings on this matter. I think that e- even if you do not believe in the Bible at all, even if you think all myth is hocus pocus, you are a utterly secular or scientifically minded person. Mm. Even such a man as this or a woman would admit that there's an almost religious like quality to Donald Trump and the upcoming election in 2024 that Mm. for Trump, it is win or die. Like you are going to prison if you lose a presidential election, at least ostensibly. And there's also a, a kind of devotion to Trump that you don't see for Biden that can only be described as cult like Mm -hmm. And I don't think I'm being unfair here. Like, I I don't think I'm being just a shrill liberal, you know, uh, disrespecting Republicans or something there. The, the, the mass rally, the kind of excitement and energy, crazy energy that goes on there, the kind of crazy notions that a lot of people will openly express of you know, you know, something like uh, their bio labs in Ukraine or whatever. But then there's also things like Trump is actually the president right now. He mm-hmm. uh, Biden is a an actor or even a robot or something. And uh, <laughs> Trump is in charge or he's in charge of the military. You've heard it all. There's there's a kind of reality bending quality to it all. And something like QAnon, you know, on one level, it was a bizarre uh gamified conspiracy theory or all-encompassing conspiracy theory but on another level it was a cult in the in the true sense of that term it was about good and evil it was about redemption um maybe trump was a sort of messiah in that cult i i think i might need to look at it a little bit more to say say for sure but but to to a degree that that's definitely true um so you know i can remember elections um like the election of bob dole versus bill clinton and there was a religious quality to that in the in the very uh minor sense of you know, Bill Clinton's a scoundrel and a sex addict or whatever. And Bob Dole is a decent guy from Kansas who's a good old fashioned Protestant or something like that. Um, mm-hmm. But that was it. it. It was it was merely on a personal level. And it, and it was a bit, you know, hit or miss. Um, but I, I feel like, you know, we, we fast forward 20, 30 years and we've just reached a new stage of politics where it is there's a itself politics itself has become religious like um so what do you think about all those ideas that this is kind of my my perspective on on this matter Mm -hmm. yeah well you raise some interesting points that even if you are secular minded that uh, there is a very religious and messianic arc happening right now with Donald Trump and uh, the immense amount of uh, uh, support and following that he has. Some may even say it's a very cult-like following where they see him as this messianic figure who is going to bring about this new age of man through the destruction of the current order, which right. you know goes into a lot of the themes that I talk about with you know the beast system versus the harlot system and how in revelation 17 16 it says that uh the beast you know the first the woman rides the beast and then the beast destroys the harlot he hates her and burns and burns her with fire and eats her flesh and what i believe we're seeing right now is the beast who you know represents this uh this messianic figure who is going to deliver us from evil uh right much like jesus which is what the Antichrist Hmm. is, a a counterfeit version of Jesus, a counterfeit Messiah who's going to bring about a counterfeit millennial kingdom, uh, right? Because in Revelation, it talks about, you know, Jesus comes, he destroys the beast system and then brings about the millennial kingdom. Well, the Antichrist is going to do exactly what Jesus did and is going to do 
in the millennial kingdom as to convince people that he is Christ. And mm. it's really interesting to see the parallels here. Right now, we see Donald Trump being literally crucified right now uh, with three indictments. I expect one more indictment, a fourth indictment, which I believe will be will symbolically represent the four nails put into Jesus. Um, mm. I believe that we are going to see him uh, sort of die and then resurrect. And uh, through his resurrection, he will bring about vengeance on his enemies uh destroying them and then uh uh with it the this current order and it's all and its players and establish something new which if you look at a lot of the q stuff that's uh they've been talking about they've been talking about how uh this what what's what trump is doing is ushering in the millennial kingdom which you know they don't realize it, but what they're actually doing is they're ushering ushering in the beast kingdom, which again is a counterfeit millennial kingdom by a counterfeit Christ. Okay, fascinating. Um, so, isn't it uh, is it odd, or may, maybe is it not that Trump is playing this role in in the minds of so many people in the sense that. As, as many liberals pointed out, this guy seems to know next to nothing about the Bible. Um, he, he, there's a kind of peel, I guess is the, the man's name, the, the power of positive thinking um, mm -hmm. presided over Trump's first marriage. Isn't that correct? Yeah. Um, uh, the guy you're talking about. Um, Norman Vincent Peel. Norman Vincent yeah. Peel. Yes, you're right. Yeah. Yeah. He, he wrote the book, The Power of Positive Thinking. And uh, he was uh, Trump's pastor. And um, by the way, he's a 33rd degree Mason, but that's besides the point. Yeah. So, uh, you know, Trump really has there's a very big, deep disconnect between Trump and the actual words of God. I've said many times that I really don't believe Trump understands fully his role in all these things. Uh, hmm. You know, it's it's funny because, you know, a lot of people, when they think of the Antichrist, they think of this young, charming guy who's going to come and he's going to. Uh, you know, he's he's going to appeal to both sides of politics and he's going to unite everyone, you know, both the left and the right into this common cause. And he's going to be, you know, this uh, Hollywood uh, actor almost. And then he's going to be very deceitful and and he's going to be evil deep down inside. And then he's going to do and he's, he's going to have tyranny, which which all all these things really derive from the Left Behind series version of the Antichrist, which I think yeah. has this. Uh, I think has propelled a lot of people into a really bad the uh, eschatology, but but what we really when we read the Bible, what we really see the Antichrist is is he is a proud, boastful, uh, loud man who thinks of, who magnifies himself as his, in his heart, who sees himself, uh, who exalts himself above all who dwell on the earth, um, at, who who really uh, wants to be praised, worshiped and, and and adored like Jesus was. He sees he sees the praise and the worship that Jesus gets and he wants that for himself because in his mind he's number 1. In his mind there is no one greater than him. Mm -hmm. And 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 what Trump is doing and and I think Trump is being led to do this. I don't like I said I don't think Trump really quite realizes his role, but I think people in his circles like Kushner I think people like um, you know uh, the 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 strong influences that you know kind of are in, in his uh, in his backstage. I think that many of them may have a clue on what's going on, and they're kind of just leading him down this path to fulfill this messianic arc for many different reasons. Number one, the religious Jews in Israel have been long awaiting their uh, chosen one, their chosen Mashiach, who would be the descendant of King David. Mind you, Jesus hmm. uh, is the true son of David, right? Which is why he's called the son of David. The descendant, the he fulfills the Davidic covenant. But the Jews in Israel rejected Jesus. They're still waiting for their uh, son of David to come because what they're looking for is they're looking for a political leader. They're looking for hmm. someone who's going to be a champion for the, for for Israel's causes and who's going to uh, stand stand up against their enemies, which they see in Trump. And um, I'm not sure if you've seen the thread that I posted um, went quite viral. Actually, but it was my biggest thread. It was uh, uh, the thread where the, the video attached to it was Trump receiving the Torah crown from the Israel Heritage Foundation. And I on their website, 
<laughs> you did see that. Okay. Yes. I, I, I'm very curious. When, when, how, when, when, and how did you hear about me? And how did? <laughs> I'm very curious. Well, I, um, I, you know, I, I have followed Adam Green, and, um, mm-hmm. and, and I've actually interviewed him. And I, ah. I think he's um, and Mark Brahman, who's on here as well. We're we're both interested in Adam Green. There, there's some, there's some common ground and some not, mm-hmm. you know, it's, con- it's not so common ground as well. Um, mm-hmm. And I I listened to his interview of you, and I was mesmerized uh, for a couple of reasons. First off, Adam is usually a a blowtorch kind of flamethrower, but mm-hmm. he he wasn't with you. He treated you respectfully, and he listened to you. And I and so, you know, even if, you know, I might ultimately disagree, I, I do want to hear you out because you've mm-hmm. thought through this and you're not just uh, blowing wind. You're you're kind of justifying what you're saying on the Bible. And, and I so I feel like even if I, you know, will, will ultimately, you know, or might ultimately reject what you're saying, I feel mm-hmm. like you're offering the most articulate and like well-grounded version of what I think a lot of people are might be thinking, or maybe they're 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 thinking in the way of a, a kind of mirror image or dark mirror, you could say, or you're their dark mm-hmm. mirror, whichever. Mm-hmm. Um, because a, a lot of the people I'm thinking of here love Trump, of course, and think he's going to save them. But I mm-hmm. I feel like you were you were able to get to the essence of something. And um, mm-hmm. so I, I really appreciated that interview. And then I've been after that. And in the subsequent year, I've, um, uh, I've, I've read a, a ton of your Twitter threads and yeah, I mean, I'm, oh. I'm fascinated <laughs> to be honest. Um, <laughs> well, well give I'm us a little that. bit of, yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean, you can obviously, you know, anonymity and all that kind of stuff, but give us a little bit about your own, personal story mm-hmm, mm-hmm, you know absolutely. in all this yeah. absolutely yeah so it's it's really funny because a lot of people come on to my uh, uh my comments and they'll say things like you know you're just a tds you have tds you're just a trump hater you're probably right. a liberal shill democrat dnc dnc plant all the cia fed everything on the under the bus but i actually I, and i've been very transparent with this i was a very very staunch Trump supporter. I voted for him in 2016. I even voted for him in 2020, actually. It really wasn't until late 2020 that I started digging into this stuff. And it's really interesting how a lot of this stuff seemed to get to me. I I didn't initially go searching for this kind of stuff. This stuff really... Uh, it, it almost it almost seems like it was searching for me in a weird way, mm-hmm. but you know I, I got a I got you know a, a taste of it. I said you know that this not you know I was like could it be? I'm like no, there's just no way, impossible. So you know I what I tried to do is I tried to kind of debunk this this notion, and the further and further down the quote unquote rabbit hole I went, the more things really started to look like you know this this is the case. And uh, it's it's really quite fascinating because it was a very hard pill for me to swallow. I like Trump. I think Trump is funny and entertaining, and I have sure. no hate towards Trump at all. I think he's I think he's very funny and entertaining. And I voted for him twice, and and I'm and I'm I'm in agreement with uh, a large portion of his policies and decisions that he made as a president and his uh, platforms. Mm-hmm. But however, I can't allow my personal feelings to uh, sort of blind me to this sort of huge mountain of evidence and uh, so many signs pointing to, you know, this, this conclusion. And, you know, it got to a point eventually where it was, where it was like, I I can no longer ignore this. And I originally Mm -hmm. made my Twitter account. I I didn't really expect uh, anyone to really follow it. It was actually just a medium for me to, post my findings, post different connections and things like this. So I could kind of keep track of it all because my wife was kind of sick of hearing me talk about it all day. Right. So (laughs) I had to talk about it somewhere. So, you know, and I'm doing this and, you know, it's attracted a lot of people. And uh, I think that the reason it has is because of just the the level of, 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 you know, of, of uh, consistency and, uh, just just so much i mean there's just layers and layers and they just all points in one direction that you know essentially what's happening right now is you know ever since trump left office you know joe biden came into power 
And it just seems like everything that is happening right now is being done purposely and by design for the sole purpose of making you more likely to embrace a uh, triumphant tr uh, uh, Trump return to power and um, to, 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 to sort of fix all of the problems that have been occurring. You mean we have, you know, the, the Ukraine, the, uh, the Ukraine situation, what's happening mm -hmm. with Russia and Ukraine. And, you know, you have the likes of even like Noam Chomsky, for example, who was a very famous leftist um, saying that, you know, uh, the only statesman that is that uh, can solve peace for this is Donald Trump, you know, which was very <laughs> shocking for many to hear. I mean, you know, it's 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 almost like Trump is being set up to be the peacemaker. He's going to come back. And it's funny because in Daniel chapter eight, verse twenty five, it says that he shall he shall magnify himself in his heart and by peace shall destroy many first Thessalonians wow. chapter five, verse three, it says that uh, in the last days, it says uh, they shall cry out peace and safety. And then sudden destruction cometh upon them as to veil a woman with child and they shall not escape. So when we're thinking about the antichrist, most of the time we're thinking of clear tyranny. We're thinking of clear antagonism to Christianity. We're thinking of someone who's going to just be an, an outright obvious evil, but that's not the case. The Antichrist is someone who comes promising peace. He comes as a peacemaker and he comes um, a, a, as a false light. Uh, Second Corinthians, I believe, chapter four, verse four, it says that Satan masquerades as an angel of light. Right. And so, you know, it, Satan's the best way to infiltrate. Uh, the best way to target Christianity is not to, by uh, overt adversity, but rather by infiltration. And that's exactly what we see. We see most of the church is is so enamored and 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 and, and wandering after Donald Trump. And we see, you know, these uh, these rising uh, quote unquote prophets who are prophesizing about Trump and how you know God is sending them message about he is God. Trump is is his David, and you know we need to be behind Trump, and Trump is gonna destroy the evil in the world he's going to bring the world out of darkness into light which is a very interesting theme which is a whole rabbit hole by itself this darkness mm -hmm. to light thing as as q says um and 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 it's really quite fascinating to see uh especially knowing the uh connections with trump and uh the religious jews in israel right now the uh the overseer of the tomb of king david the rabbi there he is trying to uh, connect. He is trying to link Trump's genealogy to King David's directly, which would make him a legitimate candidate for the Moshiach. And wow. you know, this is which which is absolutely crazy. Uh, in that thread, I showed you how uh, uh, I showed how Lev Parnas in a secret meeting, Lev Parnas and others told Trump that his numbers match the same as Messiah 424, which they're right about. Uh, Donald John Trump, when you translate it to Hebrew and put it into Gematria, equals 424, as well as uh, Messiah, son of David, also equals 424 in Hebrew Gematria. And Lev Parnas was pointing this out to Trump. And then Lev Parnas said something interesting. He said, it's amazing. It's almost like you're the savior of the whole world. It, it, it's wow. it's really quite quite interesting. And then the next day, Trump goes to visit the Western Wall, and the moment his hand touches the wall, the time turns to 424, the exact moment that he touches the wall. By the way, he was the first sitting U.S. president to visit the Western Wall uh, during presidency. Um, and he also, so many things, he moved the... Uh, the uh, embassy from Tel Aviv to Jerusalem, and right. that was a that was a that was a religious statement. When he when he did that, he made the statement that uh, Jerusalem is Israel's eternal capital, and I don't think people realize how big of a deal these things that Donald Trump did for Israel. I, I think, you know, a lot of people say, you know, that, you know, uh, oh, you know, Israel first, all this. But I mean, I don't think a lot of people really dig deeper and see what's really going on here. And and what what I believe we're seeing is we're, we are seeing the Jews uh, preparing to embrace their Messiah is going to lead them into their messianic age through uh, uh, through through fulfilling these uh, these uh, Davidic prophecies. Uh, like Jesus is, is 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 going to in the millennial kingdom, but that's what the Antichrist does. He is a counterfeit. So it's it's really all very fascinating. 
uh, when you see a lot of the these prophets of and and these and a lot of these NAR uh, like uh, evangelicals and uh, religious Jews, I mean, they really see him as a messianic figure set by God to change the world. This is all fascinating. Let me. I, I want to talk a, a a little bit about both the the identity of the messiah and then also the identity of the antichrist but before mm -hmm. i do that um mm -hmm. let, let me just get a little more I, i'm i'm curious and i and i think it it's a, it's important as well so are you in your 20s or 30s or 40s i'm 29 oh, okay okay so you're in your yeah, late 20s and then so over your youth you kind of experienced the whole trump era um oh yeah what, yeah uh, okay, oh yeah that's so interesting it's... It's very interesting, actually. So, like, you know, I I, I was very deep into the uh, the Trump fan base. I've I've been to the White House. I've been. Wow. I was at I was at January sixth. I was, oh, you know, I, I'm more, <laughs> I wasn't in the building or anything. Yeah. Good. <laughs> but, but but I I was I did I did go to that to that rally, and you know, when things started getting crazy, I, you know, we got out of there. But, um, you know, it's, that was smart. It's, it's, but, but oh yeah I, well oh, let yeah. me let me go yeah, oh, let me set some things up here so I uh, and I'll tell a little quick anecdote here because it's uh, it's fairly funny so I I was in Dallas Texas around the year uh 2000 so I'm about 15 years older than you and mm -hmm. I was actually working out at the YMCA gym and I uh there was a cute girl and um I, 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 she was leaving the gym and I decided to strike up a conversation, um, mm -hmm. as one does. And, uh, mm -hmm. she was holding a book that, that, uh, that had the antichrist and Lucifer on it. And, mm -hmm. um, so this, I guess maybe shows how bad I am at game because I'm so lost <laughs> in my head. It's kind of funny. So I was like, oh, the antichrist. I was like, oh yeah, you know, I'm super into Nietzsche, you know, I, have you ever read The Antichrist by Nietzsche? And she was like, oh, no, I don't know who Nietzsche is. And uh, and then I was like, so what's that book about? Like, it sounds awesome. And she was like, oh, it's the Left Behind series. And, um, yeah. you know, the, the NWO is going to install Lucifer. And I was kind of like, <laughs> I was so close. I was so close. So to close. <laughs> I was like, I just can't. Um, but uh, some of, you know, some people who are younger might not know this i mean they might have heard of the left line series with like kirk cameron and i think nicholas cage was in one but this was i guess i guess you could say it was it was a lot like q it was an underground bestseller and mm -hmm. in in a place like dallas texas where you know it's it's sort of in the south you there's a lot of a lot of um christians in in texas a lot of conservatives in texas oh yeah and um, this was a really important thing for them. No one was talking about it. If you were like me and you watched the mainstream media, or read the New York Times, or uh, you know were, were reading Nietzsche or whatever, you you would never heard of it. But if you went to a evangelical church, or maybe even maybe even if you're a Catholic, I don't know, you, everyone was passing this book around. It was a huge bestseller sold millions of copies mm -hmm. and it seemed to also lead directly into the 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 iraq war and bush era and a lot of people who maybe probably voted for bush but kind of i don't know maybe reluctantly or in a lukewarm mm -hmm. fashion soon mm -hmm. th there was a cult around bush that i think can be directly traced actually to to left behind there there was a sense of mm. you know invading iraq we're 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 striking against babylon and mm -hmm. we're there, there was all of this stuff that you know and someone like me who's who's secular minded i would be like all right this is nonsense it's just a bunch of you know it's the neocons want this and you know blah 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 mm -hmm. but maybe mm -hmm. i i don't like how i think about something is not necessarily how how other people do like there's there there was a religious kind of moment then too and even that you know 2005 inaugural address from George W Bush where he said this is our charge we are effectively tasked by god to bring democracy to the world i mean 
you know, you could say, oh, that's like liberalism on steroids. But what what is that outside of some kind of messianic message? I mean, it was mm -hmm, poetically mm -hmm. expressed. You know, mm -hmm. it, it, it was th this. It wasn't like I'm going to defend you from terrorists. It was like we are going to literally save the world. Mm -hmm. And so these currents are in the background. And I think a lot of people like me and liberals and libertarians and, and kind of we, we tend to dismiss this stuff or make fun of it. And I think mm -hmm. at our peril and like we are mm -hmm, we need mm -hmm. to we need to engage with it because this is the kind of stuff that is actually influencing things and, mm -hmm, and changing. Mm -hmm, yeah. But what do you think about that? I mean, also, you were you were quite younger. I guess you were born in um, when in 94, 94. OK, mm -hmm. so you you were too young to quite be in that. Yeah, um, no. And back. Yeah. Back in 2000, I was in fifth grade. I, like when when nine yeah. eleven happened, I was in first grade. Like I really didn't understand until much later on. Sure. Um, yeah. But uh. But yeah. That that's interesting that you say that. I actually wasn't. I didn't know that there was this kind of um messianic charge with George Bush and all that. That was before my time. But uh. Definitely. Yeah. I think that that uh. I think that you're right though. I think people need to pay some serious attention to what a lot of uh these types are saying because I mean they 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 truly believe that you know they are sent by god to fulfill these things and uh you know they they have a lot of conviction i mean you know there is right. there is a lot of conviction behind what they're doing it's it's not just because they want lower taxes or because you know they 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 they, they don't you know believe in climate change i mean this is you know they believe god has they you know god has his hand on what they're doing and uh, not just the uh, uh, American evangelicals, but also the uh, religious Jews in Israel. And um, I think that what we're seeing here is uh, is uh, going going very unnoticed by a lot of people. Right. So let's talk a little bit about the Messiah and I'll, I'll and and the Antichrist, and I'll, I'll kind of play off this um, or I'll kind of set the table here a little bit. So. In in the Gospels, I, I think in multiple Gospels, there's there's a, a very famous scene where um, the uh, I guess it's the Pharisees offer the Jewish people uh, Jesus Barabbas mm -hmm. and or yep. or uh, Jesus as we know him, um, and they choose consequently um, Jesus Barabbas, and it's very interesting because. Uh, First off, he ha they share the first name, so they're they're kind of mirror images of one another. And also, Jesus Brabus in one of the Gospels is depicted as an insurrectionist, and mm -hmm. that is actually fascinating mm -hmm. when you think of J six. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. it, it has a it it has a, res a resonance. So basically, what it's saying, mm -hmm. um, in my mind at least, is that mm -hmm. the the Jews are blinded to. The real Messiah. They're they're choosing mm -hmm. a man who's a ruffian, a criminal, mm -hmm. who mm -hmm. you know might have uh, gone against Rome or or the Roman authority in in, in Jerusalem, mm -hmm. and they're mm -hmm. they're they're wanting a David, and what they get is kind of like a um a a, a, a third rate David. So it it would be like the the you know not we don't want trump we want the the QAnon shaman with the buffalo horns or what you know it's this mm -hmm. kind of crude uh version of the messiah mm -hmm. uh and mm -hmm. jesus is obviously a different type of messiah jesus can sometimes use violent metaphors but they're they're metaphors he's he carry he comes with a sword he's you mm -hmm. know separating the wheat from the chaff but th those are metaphors he he's heaven mm -hmm. is not of this world at least yet. Mm -hmm. And he mm -hmm. is obviously a kind of pacific figure. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, if, if, a, if a hard edged one and a, and a, so it's, it's, you know, it's kind of both in a way, but, but he's not ostensibly, mm -hmm. he's not, he's obviously not a warlord. And mm -hmm. um, so that is the true Messiah that the Jews mm -hmm. missed in, yes. in the gospels. Um, yeah. You can so, jump in on that a little mm -hmm. bit if you, if you want, and then yeah, I'll, I'll go yeah. to the antichrist. Cause I, I've been thinking yeah. about this figure quite a bit recently go but uh, go ahead yeah so 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 you may so you make a really great point actually about the the sort of duality between you know the, the christ and antichrist you know you've got jesus and you've got parabolas you know you've mm -hmm. got jesus who says you know put down your swords you know lay down your life peacefully as i have you know because he comes he lays down his life sacrificially 
you know, for us. And then you have the Antichrist, who is, you know, or Barabbas, who is, like you said, this ruffian kind of, uh, he's, you know, he, he's, he's broken laws. He is going to go after the government. He's going to give us all of our fleshly desires. He's going to give us hope in this world. You know, he, we, you know, we just got to trust, you know, trust the plan. You know, he's, he, he's going to give us all the things that, that our flesh wants. Right. Mm -hmm. But Jesus gives us the things of the spirit. Right. And, and so th that's this, I, th I think that's what's happening with Donald Trump is, you know, people see Donald Trump as someone who's going to bring about all of these things here on earth. Right. But Jesus said, you know, my kingdom is not of this world. If my kingdom was of this world, then, you know, my servants would be fighting so that I would not be delivered unto the Jews. But my, my kingdom is not of this world. And then you've got Trump who's like, you know, he was asked what his favorite Bible verse is. You know what he said? He said, oh, my favorite Bible verse, uh, an eye for an eye. An <laughs> eye for an eye. Isn't that something? Humurabi's code, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> you know, not but... even, I guess, is that in, that, that, that's not in Leviticus. That That's, that, that's what Leviticus that's... was re like re rejecting, wasn't it? No? It's from Humurabi's so code. So, so... Yeah. So, so Jesus, so when Jesus came, he said, you know, it's, it's, it's not an eye for an eye, but like, you know, right. in, in like the old, in like the old uh, mosaic law, like if someone were to steal something, you know, if, or if someone uh, stole something or if someone, uh, you know, if someone cut someone's hand off, you know, his, his hand, you know, by the law should be cut off. And that was just for that mm. kind of time. And when Jesus came to fulfill the covenant, right. To fulfill the law, you know, he said, you know, it is not an eye for an eye. But, you know, mm -hmm. take not vengeance, but, you know, the Lord will avenge. Well, you know, mm. Trump, his his entire thing is he loves taking vengeance. He loves getting even. I just shared a video the other day of an interview of, of, of him, I think, in like the 1990s or maybe the early 2000s. And he was saying that like he, he was saying that he loves getting even. He said well, his biggest the, 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 the his biggest pet peeve or the biggest thing that angers him is disloyalty. And, you right. know, he you know, he sees he sees anyone who is you know, disloyal to him as, you know, an enemy. And he, you know, he, he's the, and he sees the people who have wronged him and he wants vengeance on them. He wants, you know, he's, you know, when he comes back, I truly believe we're going to see him go after all the people who wronged him. And it's sort of that duality. It's like that duality. It's like the Barabbas, right. Who goes after the government who, you know, isn't, you know, isn't the, uh, you know, the, the, uh, the, the peace, you know, the peaceful uh, Messiah who laid down his life, you know, who loved his enemies, uh, you know, whose kingdom was not of this world. Right. It's 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 that opposite. But he's but it's the, the messianic arc still stays the same. And, you know, you've got you've got, you know, Jesus who saves our who see who saves our spirit. And then you've got Barabbas who saves our flesh in the same way that Donald Trump is like a sort of earthly fleshly savior that people will accept. And it's interesting because in John five. You know, Jesus is talking to the Jews and he says, you know, I am come in my father's name and ye have not received me, but another shall come in his own name and him ye shall receive. And, you know, mm -hmm. it's interesting because, you know, uh, Trump is certainly someone who I would say comes in his own name. You know, uh, the Trump name is everything to Trump. He's got it plastered all over his buildings and his businesses and, sure. uh, you know, everything is Trump this, Trump that. Trump comes in his own name and the Jews have accepted him and they and I, I know as as the timeline gets further and further we're going to see this messianic uh sort of um this messianic narrative uh it's going to intensify you know i i've i've, I've I, like when i started my twitter uh channel and i said you know you're going to see we're going to see trump compared to uh, a, a messiah a messianic figure it's and it's going to ramp up quick you know and and this was in like probably early 2021 maybe mid 2021 and there wasn't really too too much of that yet uh but there was a good bit of it but it's it, it's gotten progressively and progressively worse like i you know i'm always posting like different things like larry elder said, said uh one easter he said you know jesus uh died and rose again and so too will donald trump you wow. know uh you've got yeah. donald trump jr and uh donald trump jr i think it was dc drano uh, it was a couple of those, uh, you know, conservative MAGA types. They shared a picture. Uh, it was when uh, I think it was for Trump's second indictment. Uh, yes, when he when when Trump was uh, in, uh, arraigned on Passover on April fifth, and uh, a lot of people made the connection. Well, hold on, Jesus was arrested that then too. You know, uh, 
and, and then Trump is also being arrested. So I think Donald Trump Jr. posted a picture and it was a picture of Jesus. And it was like, you know, uh, uh, Trump's not, you know, tr uh, basically, I forget exactly what it said, but it was comparing, you know, uh, Jesus's persecution to Trump's persecution. And this was shared by Donald Trump Jr. And then, uh, you know, right. and there's just so much there's just so much like uh, people comparing Trump to Jesus, comparing him to Moses, the that guy from uh, the Sound of Freedom movie, Jim, whatever, you know, Caviezel, he said, yes. uh, yeah, Caviezel. Yeah, he said that Trump is the new Moses. You know what yeah. I mean? Which is which is another uh, typology of Christ in the Bible. You know what I mean? And uh, and and I, we're, I, I believe we're going to see it ramp up. It's going to get it's going to get crazy. It's going to get really blasphemous. And, uh, and, and I believe this is the strong delusion talked about in scripture. It says, you know, God shall send them a strong delusion. And, you know, a lot of people think that, you know, oh, the left, the godless degenerate left and the LGBT stuff, you know, this is the main enemy. This is, you know, this is uh, what we had to fight against. But I think that this is a red herring. I think that the obvious evil, the LGBT, the, it, it's almost like the two sides in the Old Testament. How there was uh, uh, King Jehu versus Jezebel. You had Jezebel, who was the you know overtly evil, child sacrificing, um, you know, de uh, you know, sex cult basically. Mm -hmm. uh, that uh, and and then you had the other side, which was Jehu, who saw himself as you know the righteous hand of God, you know, to uh, destroy Jezebel. And while God did charge him to to destroy Jezebel. Jehu was not right with God either. Jehu was an idolater in his own way. And it's funny because after Jehu destroyed Jezebel, he reinstituted the national idol of the golden calves. And hmm. it was actually and it was actually Jehu's sin that was the reason that Israel was punished. So God used Jehu to destroy Jezebel and to, to, to be sort of a vessel for God's judgment. But but Jehu was punished himself as well as all of Israel for the idolatry of Jehu. And in the same way, I think that God is using Trump to bring about his righteous judgment upon the harlot, which is this obviously evil, uh, you know, uh, tyrannical system, you know, child child sacrificing, you know, uh, system, I guess you could say. Mm -hmm. And, you know, and 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 but but ultimately you know, that doesn't mean that we follow Trump because remember that God uses the beast to destroy the harlot. That doesn't mean that we follow the beast. And I think that's where the deception lies as people are, are following Trump, seeing him as, you know, uh, he, an, uh, an anointed one by God who we all need to get behind and Trump, you know, uh, all of this messianic talk. I mean, you know, we all know Trump's ego is out of this world. You know, he is really, really loving the praise and adoration and he's not going to want to stop he's i believe that when he does all these things that jesus is prophesied to do in the millennial kingdom he will say that he is christ he made a post on twitter actually saying that he was well implying that he was second to nobody but christ himself and a lot of his supporters agreeing with him uh he said that about his book he was like the the, the art of the deal is the second best book and Mm, yeah, <laughs> so he did say that. You're right. Yeah, yeah it, it's yeah, it's always really been there. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, he's all he's always seen himself as 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 better than everyone. He exalts himself above all who dwell on the earth. He really mm. does. He magnifies himself in his heart, just like Daniel says. And uh, you know, a lot of people will will sh will show me the video of him saying, "Oh, you know, uh, Jesus is more famous than me," and say, "Like, oh, see, he's a genuine Christian. Yeah, he says that Jesus is more <laughs> famous." Than I mean, I, I don't think that's a very reverent thing to say about the son of God. If you're a true believer, right, that he's more famous than you. It, you know, no. it's definitely not proof that he's a genuine believer. But, um, you know, I, I truly believe that he sees the adoration and, and, and worship that Jesus gets and he wants it for himself. So he is going to do all these things that Jesus is supposed to do, like destroy the quote unquote beast system. Right. And bring about the, the new millennial kingdom. Right. To receive the to receive that worship. And that's what the Antichrist is all about. He wants to be like the most high. Right. Interesting. So, yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, when I think of the Antichrist, I, I think of a few Fredericks, actually. Uh, so mm -hmm. Frederick II, um, he, so he is the um, the medieval uh, 
uh, Holy Roman Empire kind of Germanic king um, and uh, or emperor. And he was declared the Antichrist uh, by the Pope. Um, mm. I don't know enough about medieval history, but I, I do know kind of the broad strokes of it. So uh, mm. this was in the crusading time and Frederick it, it's it, there's a lot. I don't know. There, if, I don't know if these parallels are resonant or not. I I think they might be. But uh, mm. Frederick, I believe, demurred on going on crusades and then kind of went all in a little bit later. And he actually negotiated <laughs> a peace in Jerusalem. Um, mm. And so he was kind of putting himself on par with the Pope. And he was mm. actually declared the Antichrist. I know a lot of um, monks, um, uh, someone I mentioned a few weeks ago in this on this podcast, um, Joaquim de Fiore, who's a fascinating person, also talks about Revelation. Um, he actually thought at one point that Frederick might actually be the Antichrist and we're, we're ushering in a new age, um, an age of the uh, spirit. Uh, but at the very least, you could say that there there is that kind of, you know, from the Pope's perspective, at least, there's a kind of false peacemaker uh, mm. with someone like Frederick. And um, you, you could also uh, think of Frederick the Great. Uh, you could also think of Frederick Nietzsche. They they were all, they, they share this mm -hmm. name. Uh, Nietzsche, I believe, was born on an anniversary of Frederick the Great's coronation. Frederick the Great was a kind of, you know, the ultimate enlightened despot and um, you know, patron of the arts and sciences. Mm -hmm. um, Nietzsche, of course, declared himself the Antichrist, um, declared himself Dionysus um, in his madness. And, but, uh, you know, one of my own perspective on Nietzsche is, uh, and it's a, you know, a, I guess a little bit idiosyncratic, but I, I think it's well justified, is that despite all of Nietzsche's raging against Christianity, um, as you know, slave morality and all this kind of stuff. Um, he 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 retained the structure of Christianity I, I, in a remarkable way, where even the Superman or Ubermensch is a kind of son of man and a a a messianic figure in his own right. And I think Nietzsche understood much like Joaquin de Fiore. He kind of understood himself as at the end of an age, the end of Christianity, the end of sciences, of humanism, of rationality. And it had kind of played itself out and he was inaugurating a new age, which he he wasn't quite able to define. Um, mm -hmm. So there's this, I, you know, I don't know, I, I'm kind of going on free association or symbolism here, but there's a, these Fredericks, these Germanic Fredericks, <laughs> <laughs> and and the the antichrist um i don't know am i going too far by mentioning fred trump am i just being totally irrational here just throwing it out there. oh oh no i don't i don't think i don't think you're being irrational at all you know it's really interesting you know do, do you know what uh trump's father's middle name is no it's christ his, his middle name, his name is christ is christ yes his name is frederick christ trump and Trump's grandmother, her maiden name is Elizabeth Christ. She is the daughter of Philip and Anna Maria Christ. And there's even someone in Trump's uh, uh, family, line family lineage named Christ Christ, although not much is known about oh. this individual. Oh, yeah. Is, isn't this that is crazy? a bit too much. It's a bit too much for me. For me. <laughs> I, I'm I'm taking off uh, my Hitchens and Dawkins fedora here for a moment. <laughs> yeah, and then and then and then the matriarch of the Trump family, Elizabeth Christ Trump, she died on June 6, nineteen sixty six. That's six mm -hmm. six six six. Wow. Mm -hmm. His yeah, last know. name too is his to last name me. is um, anglicized Trump. It's anglicized. I can't remember what uh, they they made fun of his original German name. I, I Trump. Yeah. 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 And I, I don't know what the meaning or origin of that name is, but someone can look it up. Um, but uh, it means trumpeter, right? So I guess if you, it might be a sort of leap of imagination, but uh, during Revelation. You know, there are angels that trumpet the apocalypse. So maybe that's related somehow. Yeah. Well, I I, I said this the last um I on Thursday for our last podcast. Like it's all about the name. And I, I'm I'm quoting mm -hmm. that 
uh, McDonald's film starring Michael Keaton called The Founder, where he said, look, it's about the name McDonald's. It's the first song you ever learned, Old McDonald. It just says mm. America, synonymous mm. with America. And so mm. I want a a place that everyone inherently loves. They They loved it since they were a child, even when they didn't know about it. It, it was actually mm-hmm. really a brilliant kind of sentiment. And I think with Donald Trump, it's just the name. It's just the name. Mm-hmm. It, 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 there, mm-hmm. You don't, he, it, it's, it is as if he was, he were prophesized to be this leader. Just the name Trump, Don, Donald, Trump card. The name yeah, Donald, go ahead. Means, the name Donald means world leader, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yeah. yeah. So, believe, so, so Melania, so Melania means dark. Donald means world ruler and Trump means a uh, usurping ace or to beat or to usurp something. Right. Or it could mean to usher in to help to Harold. Right. Right. Um, another, another, some, some more interesting facts about uh, Trump. Uh, Jesus, 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 his mother's name is Mary. Trump's mother's name is Mary. Jesus's aunt's name is Elizabeth. Trump's aunt's name is Elizabeth. Jesus, Jesus's cousin's, cousin's name is John. Trump's cousin's name is John. You've got Christ being a big family name. The 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 maid uh, Trump's the matriarch of the Trump family. Her maiden name is Christ. Um, there is a there is a lot of really interesting, I believe, uh, symbol uh, symbolism going on with our character here, Donald Trump. As well as like what seems to be predictive programming surrounding him as well. Uh, I'm not sure if you're familiar with um, the book by Ingersoll Lockwood, um, uh, Baron Trump's marvelous underground journey. Uh, he would later uh, in 199 in the 19 in 1900 he wrote the book The Last President, and it involves a, 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 a popular businessman in New York who uh, runs for president, and uh, you know. It, uh, there are riots and stuff against him by the, uh, by a lot of the locals. And, and uh, it's, it's really interesting to see like it, 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 and you know, there's also that uh, 1958 uh, TV Western called track down. I don't know if you've seen this, but the, uh, the, Oh yeah. I posted about this uh, probably three days ago, three days, four days ago. Okay. But um, yeah, but, uh, but what happens in it is a con man the, the, the episode is called the end of the world and in the in the in the episode a con man named trump uh comes up to the town and tells them that the world is going to end and that only he can save them by building a wall and it's really eerie the obviously the similarities they have the same name trump they both they're both claiming that only they can can save people from imminent doom right trump has said that you know, we're, we're not we're not going to have the world is going to be blown to pieces. We're not going to have a world, you know, yeah. essentially, if he, if he doesn't, you know, save us, you know, the world's going to be blown to pieces. And that's exactly what, you know, um, Trump in the 1958, what TV Western said as well, by building a wall, too, of all things. I thought that was really interesting. Wow. So so yeah. what who is the Antichrist in in your view of things because i mm-hmm. if you say the word antichrist to to the majority of the population they they probably think of you know a sexual deviant or a, a satanist or something mm-hmm. someone dread mm-hmm. you know uh, uh <coughs> what is it marilyn manson or or uh, maybe <laughs> uh, in a lighter form yeah. robert smith of the cure but that's not it <laughs> is it because that you know mm-hmm. even mm-hmm. satan that that's a very different figure the mm-hmm, Antichrist mm-hmm. Um, in the from yeah. the Book of Job. So, so who mm-hmm. is the Anti? Like, what is he? G- mm-hmm, expand mm-hmm. a little bit more on that. Yeah, yeah. So, it, you know, it's it's really interesting because, as I said earlier, Satan masquerades as an angel of light. You know, a lot of people, you know, if uh, a lot of people think of Satan as this you know, individual with you know horns, and, you know, uh, re- you know, a red skinned individual with horns and a pitchfork, you know, who looks right. who looks just looks like he's up to no good, right? But that's not at all the, the description that the Bible gives of him. You know, uh, it, it's it says in Genesis that he was the most beautiful of all God's angels. You know, um, he uh, the most beautiful and the most powerful and the most wise as well. And mm-hmm. um, you know, and uh, it's it, you know, Satan. You know, the, the truth is, Satan comes as you know everything you've ever wanted. He, you know, if if most people saw Satan, they'd probably be struck in awe. Uh, you know, uh, uh, by you know, by beauty and 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 wisdom and all this these kinds of things. Very different, a uh, very different picture from the Satan that we kind of culturally have inherited. You know, um, 
but uh, the but, but is there a distinction? I mean, so the, these yes. are, in your view, these are different figures, or are they not? Yes, yes, okay. they are different figures. Yes. Okay. So in the same in the same way that there is the Holy Trinity, um, I, I I believe that there is sort of the unholy Trinity, right? Where uh, you know uh, you have the the dragon, which is Satan. You have uh-huh. the beast, which is the Antichrist, which is the first beast, and then you have the second beast the beast of the earth, which is the false prophet. And, uh, and, and, you know, the, the, this, this makes up, uh, you know, the unholy Trinity and, um, you know, the antichrist is, is, is a person who is a man, right? The Bible makes clear. He's not like some, a lot of people will say, Oh, well, you know, the antichrist can't be human, which, you know, I think the Bible makes it very, very, it's very overtly states that, you know, the, it, the Antichrist is the man of sin, the son of perdition, the lawless one, the wicked one, the lot, you know, the idle shepherd, um, you know, the, 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 the vile one, the man of sin, blah, blah, blah. So it's, it, you know, the Bible is very explicit about it being a, an individual, an individual man. And, um, you know, he, uh, the Bible describes him as someone again, who, uh, you know, he is, is very proud he is, he is, he is loud. He is boastful. He speaks great things. The Bible literally says that, you know, he shall come speaking great things. He shall have a mouth of a lion, <laughs> the mouth of a lion speaking great things. And no one speaks greater things than our man, Donald Trump. I mean, you know, everything, everything is great with him, you know, make America great again. Uh, mm-hmm. You know, this is great. That is great. You know, he speaks quite literally speaks many great things as the Bible explicitly says. And, you know, um, you know, it says, you know, he'll magnify himself in his heart and, uh, you know, by peace, he shall destroy many. And, you know, he shall deceive even the elect if it were possible. Right. You know, uh, the, the Antichrist is not going to come as someone who is going to appeal to, you know, uh, the, 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 the godless degenerate left. Right. The LGBT, LGBT supporting, you know, uh, uh, pro pro abortion left mm-hmm. right the antichrist he's not going to be someone who appeals to that he's going to be someone who's going to deceive the elect if it, if it were possible which means that he's going to be coming as someone who is going to take political positions that are congruent with the uh, uh the the christian conservative right and the evangelical right and mm-hmm. um a lot and, and i think this is very very essential to understand because I mean, this, I mean, this is a critical, uh, uh, key detail because without understanding this, we have a, we, we have a completely different picture of what the antichrist is. Like I have a lot of people who are like, oh, the antichrist is Bill Gates or George Soros or, you know, all of these, all of these different kinds of people, you know, um, Fauci, yeah, Fauci, you know, but, but what the, or Obama is a big one, right? A lot of people say Obama, uh, but, uh, you know. The Antichrist in the Bible is a very specific person who does very specific things, it, it specifically in regards to Israel, um, mm-hmm. which, which um, you know, there's just so much. Have you seen the uh, Trump Temple coin that was minted in Jerusalem? <laughs> I, I know of it due to looking at your stuff. Yes. <laughs> but, but yeah. Go into that. Yeah. Yeah. The, the, the Jerusalem minted a coin. For, uh, for the third temple in uh, in Jerusalem, it's called the Trump Temple coin, and on it there is Donald Trump uh, next to King Cyrus, right? And mm-hmm. King Cyrus was the king of Persia who conquered Babylon and allowed the Jews to return home to Israel to build their second temple. Right. Now Cyrus he did it didn't do it for the Jews; he did it for his he uh, he did it for Persia, his country. But it had the happy side effect of you know uh, of freeing the Jews. But, um, you know, uh, it's interesting because on the coin, it's got Trump, it's got Cyrus, and um, it says, and he charged me to build him a house, which which is, you know, the third temple. Um, there's a really interesting book called the, uh, Donald Trump, the Rabbis and the Top Secret Plan to Build the Third Temple by Thomas Horn. Um, hmm. that, that, is, that is a really interesting read as well. And... Um, you know, there's so there. There is just so much. I mean, there's just so many layers to this. Well, but let, it's let interesting. Me dilate because, on this yeah. a little bit because Go ahead. so, yeah. I mean, because so Cyrus is is not the Antichrist, but he's a he's a different figure, and I think Trump definitely conforms to him. So Cyrus was inspired by Yahweh to some degree. I mean, he his 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 actions mm-hmm. were. 
Mm-hmm. Um, but so Cyrus um, is is it's that kind of like indirection or or unintended consequence, I, I guess you could say, which is that he's despite the fact that he is Persian and, and conquered Babylon and ended the Babylonian captivity is depicted in, in Daniel, etc. He's he's kind of a great man, but an unintentional one. And mm-hmm. I think Trump definitely adheres to that archetype in, mm-hmm. in so many ways. I mean, if you mm-hmm. ask your average New York Times reading liberal, like what is who is Trump and what's the problem with Trump? Is she, you know, she or he would say, you know, he's a white mm-hmm. nationalist. He he's inspired neo Nazis. He's a far rightist. He wants to end abortion, all this kind of stuff. But like, you know, so his intentions are are even ostensibly at least kind of like anti-Semitic or or or, mm-hmm. or pro-white. But mm-hmm. that's not what ultimately happens. I mean, it's it's mm-hmm. like his most consequential uh, 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 matters, I don't think are really the tax cuts. I, I think it's, um, and it's not the wall exactly. Uh, it is uh, the Supreme Court judges who are going to, who have ended Roe v. Wade might lead to the um, outlawing of abortion. It's possible. Um, happening to some degree in in various states, and uh, and also just that being in his words the most pro Israel president of ever, ever um, mm. of moving symbolically moving the uh, the embassy. I mean, there there seemed to at least have been uh, inklings of this. I mean, we we were very close to a war. Uh, against Iran. I mean, the missiles were all but in the air. Um, and he did do, you know, do engage in a, a very vicious attack on an Iranian leader. So there I, he's I could kind of, uh, you know, looking at this from a secular perspective, I could definitely see him as fulfilling that Cyrus archetype. But maybe I mean, you're suggesting that there's there's even more to it, that this is you know, um, so you you can you can go on that. Yeah, I believe that there is more to. It. I think that there's. I think that I quite literally think that we are witnessing the fulfillment of God's will. And you know, it's funny because it's funny because a lot of people call me like Blue Anon, you know, or something like that. They think that mm-hmm. you know, I'm 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 in no I'm by no means a liberal. I or I've never been a Democrat. I've never supported you know, any kind of Democrat policy or anything like that. So to call me, yeah, I get that impression. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm very staunchly on the right. Very, very staunchly. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I was really into um, a lot of the, the further right kind of stuff actually for a very long time. Um, mm-hmm. And uh, I, I've actually, I've actually, I've actually known about you for, for probably, probably since 2016. I think the first time I heard about you was, the uh, that that video that went viral, uh, you probably know which one I'm talking about with Trump. Oh, the hail hail Trump. Yeah, hail, I mean, yeah, yeah. I played my own kind of weird little role in this mm-hmm, prophecy. Mm-hmm. It in a yeah, way, unknowingly, of, of, unknowingly, uh, uh, yeah, and and in kind of um, yeah, uh, you know, ushering him, uh, uh, you know, giving Trump this, uh, m- maybe putting a mask on Trump in a way mm-hmm. of. You know, oh, you know, he's getting this adulation from these, you know, far rightist. Um, but I, uh, I, I definitely recognize this even in 2018. I certainly recognize it now that all of that adulation was ultimately false. So it was like I was deceived mm-hmm. as well, and I mm-hmm. was mm-hmm. playing a role in a drama that I did not support. <laughs> But yeah, um, yeah, 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 I, I would say the same thing about me. It's like, you know, I played a very big role in this plot that I didn't quite in this in this in this story that I didn't quite understand the plot to yet. And I right. think that's what most of most of what's going on is, I, I you know, you, you've got interesting like you, uh, you've got people like um, Wayne Allen Root and, and you know, people who are just making these big messianic claims and they don't, I don't even think they really realize what they're doing. I think that they're just kind of, I think that there are just spiritual forces at work that are ultimately leading, you know, people into, you know, this, this, this story. I mean, it's the greatest story ever told. God wrote it. I believe, you know, Mm -hmm. and, and whether we, and whether we know it or not, we are all playing a role. We all have a role to play in it. And, uh, and most people don't really understand this. And, um, 
you know, it's, it's, it's just really funny because it's like, you know, uh, Christians have been talking and warning about the antichrist for years and years and years. And then when he finally comes, they completely embrace him. You know, it's, right. it's, it's almost, it's, it's such, it's such an ironic twist, you know, it's like, uh, it's, 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 it's so it's, it's almost beautiful in a way. <laughs> so what do you think might, I, I guess I have two questions and th- this is the first one. So what do you think we're going to see in, in the upcoming year? I mean, I, I think that the the notion that Trump is being uh, you know, <laughs> figuratively crucified, I, I, I think is clear to everyone. I mean, he, he is, whether he's, whether this is justified or legitimate, I mean, I, I, you know, mm-hmm. I, we don't even have to go into it. I, I think it is, but right. you know, it, it, he's clearly being prosecuted and and persecuted. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. So what? How? How do you see this drama unfolding over the next year or so? So I, I believe that uh, we're going to see this persecution ramp up. We're going to see. The talks of uh, him being this messianic figure ramp up dramatically. Um, like I said earlier, I I think we may see one more indictment, one more indictment to uh, mm-hmm. symbolize the the four nails used to crucify Jesus. Um, I think that um, what's people uh, you know people are going to get more and more fed up with how Trump is being treated because he is you know uh, seen by a lot of the evangelicals as the sacrificial lamb who kind of is, you know, laid out in his life. You know, I see this meme all the time about, you know, Trump had such a perfect life. He didn't have to do this. You know, he right. sacrificed his life for us. Right. Which is a very interesting theme <laughs> that it plays so well with the messianic arc of Jesus, you know, him laying down his life, you know, for, for us, you know, dying for us. And then, you know, the, I see the meme floating around all the time, you know, they're not really after, me they're after you i'm just in the way i think trump right. actually just recently shared that you know and he's and he's he's literally being um he's literally being made into a martyr he's literally being made into the sacrificial lamb on our behalf like jesus was and i think we're going to see these themes keep playing out and playing out um until eventually i i i truly believe that donald trump will return to power it might not be through the election it might not be through the presidency i don't know i i, I mm-hmm. truly don't know how but i believe that donald trump will return to power he said he said i think his last day of office he said we will be back in some form right hmm. so you know a lot of people say oh is trump going to win the election i don't know if trump's going to win the election right he may win the election he may not win the election a lot of the election fraud stuff you know has not really been addressed you know what i mean i think that uh, there's going to be i think that there's a big uh uh uh, story arc uh, that's going to happen with this election fraud stuff. I think we're going to see, you know, that kind of uh, uh, part of the plot play out more. You know, I don't think we've seen the last of that plot plot point. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, the, the election fraud and you know him him having the election stolen and all this. I think we're going to see that uh, ramp up in some way. And uh, you know, essentially, you know, Trump is going to be is going to be made. You know, the 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 guy that. The deep state, you know, is trying to get rid of so that they can enslave humanity, um, which, by the way, fits very well with kind of a Gnostic framework, which goes into the uh, Great Awakening. Uh, I'm sure you've probably heard of, uh, you know, a lot of people talk about this Great Awakening, this Great Global Awakening that's happening, and mm-hmm. it's really interesting because, you know, the uh, the uh, the occult has been talking about this uh spiritual uh humanity's spiritual awakening for quite literally centuries and um you know if you read the work of like uh helena blavatsky or alice bailey you know um you know the occult has always been about humanity uh destroying tyranny and reaching an uh, a new age which is which mm-hmm. is literally where the term comes from new age uh and, and what it is it's a counterfeit of of the true new age of christ and the millennial kingdom but it's a luciferian version of that where we bring the kingdom of god to earth and uh you know alice bailey has a quote saying that people are no longer interested in a uh in uh in a in a, in a spiritual heaven and hell you know people people want heaven on earth now you know and and they and they want and 
you know, and that's, and that's exactly what it's always been about. It's about bringing heaven to earth, this, this counterfeit, this counterfeit kingdom. And, mm-hmm. uh, you know, I, uh, I don't know. I'm not sure if you're familiar with, uh, Marina Abramovic. Yes. I'm, <laughs> I'm one degree yeah. of separation from her actually. Oh, <laughs> I won't go into it. But... Okay. Okay. <laughs> interesting. <laughs> Very interesting. So I'm, I'm fascinated by her, by the way. I've um, never met her. She, I've never met her, but I, yes. Her. Okay. Okay. Gotcha. 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 So she, have you seen the clip of her talking uh, during an interview when she says that she spoke to a group of shamans in Lapland and what these shamans do is they get together and they do something called collective dreaming. And what that is, is they get together and they all have the same dream and, you know, whatever. And she said that, uh, she said that one of the shamans got, you know, that she talked to said to her, that the best thing to happen in this world was for Trump to be the president. And she said, you know, what? Like, what do you mean? Mm-hmm. How is this possible? And she said that the shaman said to her that Trump is so irrational, he's so crazy, that he's actually going to bring about an awakening. He's actually going to – he's actually the uh, a, a magician of the highest order who is going to bring a worldwide awakening. And uh, I find that very fascinating that she said that because that goes right alongside with what I've been saying about, you know, Trump being this, you know, the messianic chosen one, the Luciferian chosen one who is going to destroy tyranny, who's going to who's going to first, uh, you know, awaken the masses to the to, to, to the tyranny and to all the conspiracy theory, because if you think about it, conspiracy theory has really gone mainstream at, uh, you yes. know, at this point in time. Yes. And, 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 and it's, it's, and I believe it's like this completely by design. I don't think, I don't think it's an accident that, you know, conspiracy theory is as, is as mainstream as it is. I think that what's happening right now is that these things are being, the obvious evil is being revealed and exposed, right? The darkness, so to speak, so that we can be brought into the light, right? Which is a, which is a false counterfeit light. The false light you, you see, uh, you know, Q talk about from from dark, you know, dark to light. It's actually mm-hmm. a very uh, mas- uh, masonic phrase, dark uh, from darkness to light. Uh, I posted uh, the the masonic art that has that uh, that has that uh, written on it from darkness to light, and um, I think that's what this great awakening is. I think what it is is introducing humanity, initiating humanity into the uh mystery school into the mystery school teachings uh through this awakening through destroying tyranny and you know bringing darkness to light so to speak and i think trump is their saint germain uh who they which a lot of new agers actually argue that trump is the reincarnation of saint germain and saint germain is said in uh, a lot of uh, new age circles to be the one who will herald the uh the new age of aquarius it's funny actually when uh trump won his uh won the presidency in 2016 uh him and melania came out to the song this is the age of aquarius wow. um believe it or not and it's it's really interesting i believe it is. <laughs> yeah it's 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 you know it's it's really interesting watching this all play out you know you've got a lot of these new age types who are saying you know donald trump is you know going to be the one who is going to bring about, you know, who's going to destroy the deep state. And that's what Trump has been saying, like very overtly too. He is going to destroy the deep state. You know, uh, Don, uh, what's his name? Don Kim, Don King or something like that. That black guy. Mm-hmm. He said, yeah. uh, that he said, he said, let's get rid of this system and Trump's the man to do it. This is what it's always been about. It's about, you know, destroying the old order and bringing about the new order from its ashes, like the rising Phoenix from darkness to light order out of chaos you know uh it's 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 really fascinating to see how deep this all really goes well do you think he might you know he's presenting himself as a kind of peacemaker with russia Mm -hmm. but he he's also Mm -hmm. said you know oh i'll i'll nuke moscow if he ever tries anything there there's a kind Mm -hmm. of like bellicose and pacific motive going on at the same time i mean do you do you, do you think that is how it might play out or do, or do you do you think like the Q prophecy would play out in the sense of frog marching uh, a, a bunch of bureaucrats and politicians <laughs> on Pennsylvania Avenue? I mean, what, what or, or, mm-hmm. or, or am I missing? Or is that too obvious in a way? Like what? 
Uh, how uh, well, do you have any inkling of what's I, going on? I think I think there's a lot of credence to both of what you're saying. I think it's really interesting also that if you listen to a lot of the rhetoric that Putin has been saying, I mean, it's very in line with a lot of the uh, Great Awakening Q crowd. You know, uh, you know, uh, oh, yeah. he's all Putin is always talking about. You know. Uh, how Satan is in control in the West. And, you know, he's always, you know, saying all these same great awakening talking points. You know, I think that uh, it's, you know, I think it's very possible that uh, there will be some sort of alliance possibly. Um, I'm not really sure exactly how all that will play out. I can't say for sure, but Mm -hmm. I know that I, I do believe that Trump in some way is going to, you know, bring about this uh, age of peace Right. And the reason he does this is because in Micah, uh, the book of Micah, it talks about how in the millennial kingdom, nations shall not lift finger against another nation. And, uh, you know, that's exactly what the same thing that uh, the Antichrist is going for. Right. He wants to be a counterfeit Christ with a counterfeit kingdom. He is going he's going to want to bring this worldwide peace and the world is going to wonder. And, uh, you know, uh, I, I think that. Uh, when Trump returns, I think we're going to see him expand the Abraham Accords, which, by the way, is very interesting by itself. Um, he wanted to name the Abraham Accords the Trump Accords. Uh, Abraham is a is a typology of Christ in Scripture. Mm-hmm. Um, you know uh, the uh, the yeah. I, I, I you know it's funny. Uh, Trump has actually been trying <clears throat> to be the peace negotiator in the between the Israelis and Palestinians. For over 40 years, there was a picture taken by William Coupon in 1983 of Trump holding a dove. And in it, you know, it's uh, it says that, you know, tr- uh, Trump did that uh, because he was promoting he was trying to promote himself as uh, to be the peace negotiator between the Israelis and Palestinians. And that's exactly the role of the Antichrist, you know, to 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 bring peace to the middle east so it's interesting like how long it seems like this has all been trying to he he, he's really been trying to do this you know and i i don't think i don't think he realizes that he's the biblical antichrist i really don't think he does i truly think that he wants to be he wants to be the best he wants to be number one and that there's people in his corner specifically like jared kushner who are wanting him to fulfill the messianic prophecies for the, the the jewish people in israel and I think everything is lining up almost too perfectly. I mean, I mean, it, everything is really lining up so, so crazy. Uh, well, well, this yeah. this brings up a, a question of mine. So uh, yes. in in one of the trailers for the latest Indiana Jones movie, um, mm-hmm. which I actually I'm the one person who actually liked that film, but that <laughs> is uh, neither here nor there. Um, there was a good line. Uh, by Harrison Ford. And he said, you know, um, uh, you know, I've learned at some point that it's not just what you believe, but how hard you believe it. And mm. what he was getting at is kind of like the, is it prophecy or are you willing a prophecy into existence? And and in some ways, there's no real distinction to be made. Um, now, obviously, Indiana Jones movies have some some magic in, involved in them, but at the maybe at the heart of them, it's about people believing in these prophecies so hard that they themselves bring it about. Bring and it about, like mm-hmm. will it? I mean, so I guess what I would what I would suggest suggest is that one understanding of of what you've put forward here today it. You could remain a secular, you know, science atheist type and mm-hmm. and and still conclude that everything you say is correct in the sense that there are people, you know, in this world who believe this. And mm-hmm. Trump is someone, you know, the the Kushner thing has been, you know, is a kind of a meme in the alt right, but a, or or the the right in general, but it's a it's a meme for a reason. It's that, who is this character? Um, why does he have? Why is he overseeing everything from the you know the peace in the Middle East to immigration and I the the vaccine? I can't even remember what he was up to. So there, and and this is someone who has an orthodox background. So it's kind of like 
is it, might there be actors, whether it's real or not, whether whether God mm -hmm. exists or not, I'll I'll leave that mm -hmm. to to mm -hmm. to each person to decide. But but like, mm -hmm. might there be people who are there? You know, the the best explanation for their actions is that they are manipulating the world to fulfill mm -hmm. a prophecy. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. so, what, what what do you think about that type of mm -hmm. explanation? Yeah. So it's, so it's really interesting. Uh, it's, it, it reminds me of the conversation that I had with Adam Green, actually, because as mm -hmm. you probably know, Adam Green does not believe, uh, he's not a Christian, right? He doesn't mm -hmm. believe in that, that these are, you know, prophecies being fulfilled. Although, although, you know, he said that, you know, <laughs> uh, it's, 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 it's very, it's very easy to see why, you know, uh, when, when looking at all the evidence that I've laid forth, but, you know, he, right. you know, he said like, you know, can, couldn't this just be, you know, men, you know, human beings who are, you know, uh, uh, putting all this together, all of these things together to as as to make these prophecies come alive and, and, and you know, fulfill these prophecies. And it's like, yeah, I, I do believe that, uh, you know, there are many men who are, you know, doing things in order to fulfill these 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 prophecies. But like when you get into a lot of the really esoteric uh, connections, like when you went, like, like uh, I'm not, I'm not suggesting that you do this, but when you really, if you really wanted to sit down and look at like the, the, the numerology and the astrology of it, I mean, you know, Trump, like, for example, Trump was born June 14th, 1946. He was born on, he was born on a, uh, under a total lunar eclipse, a blood moon, Right. It was the first mm -hmm. blood moon after the uh, 1946 Babylon working rituals, which, uh, you know, is a whole another rabbit hole. Um, he was born exactly uh, he, he became president exactly 70 years, seven months and seven days after his birth. Uh, he was wow. born exactly 700 days before Israel. He would move the, the embassy to Jerusalem uh, uh, on uh Israel's 70th year anniversary since its founding. Um, wow. There is, uh, there is, I mean, I have entire threads. I mean, and then you look at the planetary alignments. I mean, <laughs> there's a lot of threads that I have. I mean, just detailing how meticulous, I mean, uh, this mm -hmm. would have to, a lot of this stuff would have to be. And I, you know, I've made the, the, the case that I don't think a human being or a group of human beings are even capable of a lot of these really, really deep, like numerological, astrological alignments, you know, that, that accompany all of these things. I truly believe that there are spiritual forces at work here. I, I don't think human beings are, are really meticulous enough to be able to uh, I'll make everything align in such a way. I, I truly believe this is a spiritual phenomena going on and that mm -hmm. men are just playing their parts in all of it right well yeah i mean i i can see that i mean and in, in, in some ways there's no distinction to be made or it's a distinction rather difference i mean i'm reminded of thinking about um january 6th where mm -hmm. there you know so much of the motive of the QAnon movement was trust the plan that that is be passive mm -hmm. you know you don't have mm -hmm. to do anything just just follow along look at the signs and trump's you know got this taken care of and there was a moment, you know, on January 6th, where being passive transfigured itself into being willful. And so all of these people, you know, it's like they they heard about the storm and, and there was, a, I guess, an element of like, well, if you, if you don't do it, I'll do it myself. What was that from Major League? <laughs> <laughs> if you don't help me now, Jabu, I do it myself. <laughs> um, it, it, there was a there was an element of that to it, of, of like we are the storm. In fact, all of mm, it's mm, not mm. about being passive. We are part of this, mm. and mm. you know Ashley Babbitt's last um, uh, her last moment on video, at least, was was mm. quoting Q, and so it was mm. it was like the the prophecy was mm -hmm, put mm -hmm. there, and then she mm -hmm. became the prophecy mm -hmm. in her own yeah. kind of terrible way. way. So I, so in yeah. a way there's, yeah. there's no distinction, you know, it's like we, you know, whether, whether it's real or not, or whether people are mm -hmm. willfully making it happen, it, it's, it's mm -hmm. happening in this way. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I, 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 I agree with you actually. And um, uh, it, it goes back to what me and Adam were talking about. Like, you know, it's, 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 
it's it's either you know that uh, you know the people people in high places are are get are doing it, but there's also like you said an element of you know people kind of fulfilling these things you know and and playing their role in a very uh, you know in a very interesting way. Like kind of like Ashley Babbitt, how like you know she kind of played her role in it in a, in a kind of a mm-hmm. twisted way, um, and you know became Definitely. you know I see, I I kind of see her as like the first as as the first martyr, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like uh, how Stephen in the Bible was the first martyr that kind of set it all off. Like she's you know kind of seen as the first martyr, you know, mm-hmm. uh, and uh, yeah, it's 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 all very interesting. I I personally I personally believe though that by the end of all this by the time this is all said and done i think that it's going to be uh, a bit more obvious that uh you know this is this is the work of god uh i don't think that's going to be obvious yet i don't think it'll it'll be obvious for a while but uh i think that point in time will come Mm -hmm. uh you know so Okay. So we will have to wait for that moment. <laughs> we shall see. Yes. Um, yeah. <laughs> I, well, I will. Uh, I will be quiet for a little bit. So, um, if you would like to ask a question, you can raise your hand, and I will uh, go through.